Greetings and hello to all of you. Shalom to you if you're a saint. Thank you so much for joining me this evening on this broadcast. Uh, of course, while you're here, would you be kind enough to let me know whether you can see clearly and hear clearly so that we can proceed, uh, hopefully being uninterrupted. I'd be grateful if you can just let me know that. Thank you so much for sharing this moment with me. A uh, very significant moment. Uh, one that I believe would be one of the most important to my brothers and my sisters here in Guyana and to my fellow Guyanese. Our nation, as I always say to you, is in peril. Our nation is in absolute crisis. Thank you so much for the feedback. Now while you are giving me the all clear that we can hear and you can see clearly, please, if you do not mind, share the broadcast with someone who you know is not normally live because of some Facebook algorithm of, of the sort, of some sort. And, um, or you can invite the person, an individual, so that they can hear this. If you have, thank you so much, Brianna, for your feedback. If you have got Priya Manik Chan or any one of the PPP civic leaders, especially Priya Manik Chan, as a friend of yours on Facebook, you can tag her too. Or if the Ministry of Education page, you've liked their page, you can share this broadcast on their platform. You can share it to the PPP civic, to the APNU AFC, or the other neophyte parties that are non existence as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but feel free to have this broadcast uh, shared to these relevant authorities. I don't have them as, as a friend on my page. Because they need to hear from someone who is unafraid, from someone who is unconcerned about their political status. They need to hear from someone who could not care less about who they think they are. But most importantly, they need to hear from someone who is willing to speak to their political agendas in a manner that is fair and that is worthy, hopefully, of their attention. Why is it this broadcast being deemed the terrorists among us? If I speak to you about terrorism, the connotation that you shall arrive at, more than likely, would be someone re resembling Osama bin Laden, because that's what the USA presented to the world as a terrorist. A terrorist to most of you would be somebody who may be of Middle Eastern descent, or Asian descent as you may want to present it. Somebody who looks like an Arab. Worst. Many people, especially in the U.S., can only see terrorists as Muslims, which is quite unfortunate. I hasten to share with you, before I proceed deeper, that some of the most renowned terrorists that the world has ever seen are the Catholics, the Crusaders. Those who went out on a mission to spread the gospel by slaughtering people who didn't accept it, they are terrorists. But they're not deemed terrorists by the USA or by Europe. They're deemed crusaders. You ever heard it sounds, why, it sounds good, right? Terrorists were those who were involved in the slave trade. Terrorism is, is, is what they did to your ancestors, to my ancestors, to those of African descent. They butchered my ancestors. But they call that a slave trade. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? So it was a business arrangement. It was a slave trade. It was not terrorism. And if any slaves sought to escape, African slaves sought to escape, some of them were dismembered. Some of them were fed to dogs, were bitten by dogs. And, and you know, you know your, your history if you do. Um, but that's not terrorism. That's called a business. It was a trade. Hence, when slavery was abolished, those who were terrorizing Africans were given money, not the Africans, the slave owners were paid in today's society 
and today's among billions of dollars because we would have lost business. I'm saying that to you because I want you to be aware of what you were made to believe a terrorist is and what some of you still do believe a terrorist is. And you are sitting in Guyana under terrorists and don't realize it. And I'm here to speak to that because I'm seeing it and I'm seeing what I know warrants my warning you and after I would have warned you and you choose to accept it then that's on you that's no longer me that's no longer my responsibility as I would have said shalom and blessings as I would have said to you you are not trained to think that a terrorist can be somebody who doesn't have a gun in their hand, who doesn't have a bomb in their hand, who doesn't have some device that's intended to, 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 to inflict massive destruction on humanity. But I must hasten to say to you that terrorism doesn't speak to killing anybody. Not necessarily. You don't have to kill anyone to be a terrorist. That's good. Terrorism speaks to two things, two key areas. And I'm, I will repeat this as I proceed in the broadcast. A terrorist is an individual, or a terrorist may be a group of people who, through criminal means, they inflict harm on individuals, or they seek to intimidate individuals all for political gain. Now I promise you, I'm going to define this term again for you, what terrorism means according to a dictionary. And there'll be some PPP civic crony, a PPP civic retard, who will pay no attention to what I've just said. And they will ignore a definition of the term terrorist and call somebody else who doesn't display any of this behavior a terrorist. I promise you that. They're going to find some other definition that doesn't exist in the English language, by the way. I promise you it will happen, more than likely, in the re in, while they watch a rebroadcast. They don't do that normally live, Fig. A terrorist is someone, or terrorists are a group of people, who, through criminal means, use violence. Or they may intimidate individuals especially civilians here civilians not soldiers there's not warfare we're talking about this is where some political entity or a group of persons not necessarily politicians who would seek to intimidate individuals for political gain does that sound familiar to you if ever a government a group within the government or a group in your society has a political ambition. Political doesn't mean you want to run a country. Politics means to govern. I tell you that all the time. The word politics means to govern. Anybody wants to rule another group of people and their intention or their, 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 their mode of action is to intimidate you into accepting their rulership, that is terrorism. I therefore would like to submit to you right off the top that this PPP civic government, this one right here, is demonstrating absolute terrorism towards the people of Guyana. And it is too glaring to be unnoticed. This government as a result of COVID-19 is demonstrating all of the attributes of terrorists. And it seems to be the only known way of functioning. It is unimaginable for people who claim to be educated and leaders of this country to say to you that they, they understand that according to the United Nations, you're not supposed to force an individual to be vaccinated. It is a voluntary act. These people are repeating the jargon that we are not forcing you to be vaccinated, but, and I spoke to this before, but just for reinforcement, I shall reiterate. 
We are not forcing you, they would say. However, however, they started at the lower scale. However, for schools to be reopened, teachers will have to be vaccinated. But we're not forcing you. But for teachers, for schools to be reopened, parents, we know you want schools to be reopened. pre manager Chan, I'm speaking to here. We, you want schools to be reopened. Uh, well, the teachers have to be vaccinated. But they're not forcing you. But the teachers must be vaccinated. Then they turned their attention to our military force. And I knew this was coming. They began to verbally instruct the soldiers that they must be vaccinated. The soldiers were not taking the vaccine. The next thing that they did was they began to discriminate against soldiers who did not take the vaccine. They said they would not be allowed to travel among the others. They were not allowed to eat before those who were vaccinated. So the people who were unvaccinated in the army, they were blatantly disregarded. It doesn't matter how much work you did. If you're not vaccinated in Guyana, as a soldier, you are not permitted to eat before your squaddies, as they call them. You had no right to eat before these people. For Father's Day, you had no, no hamper to receive, as was customary, if you're unvaccinated. But they weren't forcing the soldiers yet. Then it became a matter of their ambition, the soldiers' ambition. And I spoke to this. With this government, under this government, the military would have been telling people that if you are enrolled in any educational facility or program to advance your academic status as a soldier in Guyana defending, defending the integrity of this nation, you were told or they were told that they have to withdraw forthwith. This is a caring government, I'm, government I'm speaking to here. Who would have withdrawn the soldiers from their academic pursuits with immediate effect. Not just that, but they were sent on leave. Nothing was written yet. And people were saying that they got instructions from higher up. Who? Nobody seems to know. Then we got to the stage where it is finally because the soldiers refused to react in a manner that I said they should have done in the first place. Our soldiers rolled over like puppies and accepted this foolishness. So the government realized or those who were behind this realized that the soldiers of all people who should have been the most courageous bunch in our nation whimpered they became scared or whatever it is because they don't want to lose their salary. So they accepted the bullying. And if your soldiers could crumble, what would civilians do? These politicians are not angels that some of you think they are. They already understand that if fifty or $75,000 per month for a PCR test. And this... Is it back? Tell me when I'm back. That's GTT for you. This caring government is willing, with all of the knowledge in hand as to what soldiers are paid. Somebody said life is choppy. Okay, it's better now. Okay, I'm not back yet. That's that's our internet system here for you. I'll wait. Please let me know when, the, when, the, when the, 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 the quality of the stream gets better. Somebody said it's freezing. All right, we'll see when it gets, somebody said it just came back. So let's see. It's 
good. Okay. So as I, let me just repeat that part as I was saying to you. This caring government of ours would have withdrawn soldiers from their educational pursuits and programs with immediate effect. Then they have written to tell these people that they must present a negative PCR test at the soldier's expense, not at the army's expense. So any soldier who does not receive the vaccination the vaccine has to, out of their pocket, pay twice per month for a PCR test. This is the caring government we're speaking to here. Somebody said in Antigua they're hitting the roads on Monday. I'm ready to hit the road now. So let me proceed before we lose signal further. As I was saying to you that it doesn't seem as if many of you or the soldiers or, or, or this government cares about how much money soldiers are, are making here. A soldier does not earn on average $300,000 per month or $1,500 US per month in Guyana. So how can they afford somebody's asked what's the cost of PCR test? In some cases it's $20,000, some $25,000 depends on where you go. So how are we supposed to accept someone in the military who's protecting our integrity, our sovereignty? How can you expect some soldier with a family, for example, to spend maybe 50% of his salary on a test to appease this government? Does that sound fair to you all? Does that sound rational to some of you? That in this country, soldiers are being told that they have to present a negative PCR test or they're not allowed to return to work. And the soldier must pay $25,000 per test twice per month. Or more, maybe more. If not, take the vaccine. That is called intimidation. That is a form of terrorism that's happening under this government. The churches are quiet, obviously, and expectedly so. The Muslims, some of them are speaking, others, maybe from a different sect, are saying nothing. The Hindus are absolutely quiet. And it seems as if Guyana is held hostage by a group of terrorists. And I don't know what you're afraid of. And how you long intend to deal with this, but I'll show you the progression here. So as long as the soldiers, the soldiers, the military arm, would have acquiesced, would have bowed so easily to this behavior, I knew what was going to happen next because I said it. Here's the next strategy. You began to hear it was published in Guyana Chronicle and I'm yet to see Ramsami deny it. This advisor, Leslie Ramsami, the advisor to the Minister of Health, or before that I should say, before that, suddenly there was cause on the, on the Minister of Health's part. After one plus years, year of dealing with COVID-19, this minister, Frank Anthony, before we get to Leslie Ramsamy, suddenly, after more than a year, found it necessary to inform us, the public, about the number of children who have been infected with COVID-19. Why? I looked at it and I, I, of course, it's on my page. Whatever I say is on my page and still some idiot would speak as if it's not there. Out of the blue, after more than one year, 
this Minister of Health suddenly saw the need to present to you that 1,500 plus of our children would have been infected with COVID-19. And four of them in one day, they just published it. Four children are in the ICU because they have more severe reactions to the, to the disease. And some of you couldn't even think about why this was happening. And I spoke to it because I knew exactly what they were going to do. The moment Frank Anthony published these figures last month, I knew that the next thing they're going to sing to you all is that your children must be vaccinated. What did Priya say yesterday or two days ago? I know these people as if, like, as they say, like a palm of my hand. I can read them with the absolute perfection. Children, their brain didn't miss much. Imagine that out after more than a year, Few, five, six, seven months into, into office. But we have August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. So at least 10 months into office, Frank Anthony decides that you're supposed to inform the public at this time that 1,500 of our children have been infected with COVID-19. That's reported cases. When the 17-year-old would have died, they said nothing. Now, I said upon that announcement that this government shall. The next step, tell you that your children would have to be vaccinated. Priya Manik Chan, the Minister of Education, a few days ago said that they have vaccines, they're waiting for the rollout of the vaccines for the 12 to 17 year olds. That's exactly what I told y'all they were going to do. So they created the alarm now. Listen, children are being affected by, infected by, by COVID. So come on, uh, we have to prevent our children from getting sick. So Frank can't think of you data to work with. And I promise you that parents are going to see no harm in having their child or their children injected with a pathogen that the world has no long-term record of in terms of its effect. Some of you are that stupid and you love your child that much. But the catch is going to be that in order for school to be reopened, the children of the age 12 to 17 must be vaccinated. So if they have a nine-year-old brother or a 10-year-old brother, they don't have to be vaccinated. So this whole vaccination stuff from Priyamanik Chan is just as foolish as her presentation because she's suggesting here that if you vaccinate a 12 to 17 year old child who's living with four other siblings younger than 12 years old, then what? The vaccine works. This COVID vaccine that this government presents to you has a mind as if it belongs in the Fort Candy Hospital, as if it's mad, as if it has a psychological issue. This cannot make any sense to these rational people who claim to be rational. You are saying to me that a child from 12 to 17 should be vaccinated. So what if they have siblings that are younger than 12? What happens? Someone said it's freezing again. Okay. I know and I say to you again, that the minute Frank Anthony, the Minister of Health, I call him Minister of Explanation because he can, he can explain every, everything away. The moment that this man would have said that 1,500 plus of our children would have been infected with COVID-19, I know that they're saying that to create the right atmosphere to push, to push a vaccine onto you. These people are going to suggest to you that they are responsible for your child. Because you cannot do what's best for your child. I have a 14, well, she's going to be 15 years old in a few months, few days. And I know this government is going to, at some point, seek to tell me that my 14-year-old must be vaccinated before she can go 
into school. Try it. Try it. Because what you're going to tell me is that the vaccines are available and the child must be vaccinated in order to protect others who are unvaccinated. Then you turn and tell me now, the other part is that now, the unvaccinated, we get to Leslie Ramsamy here, that the unvaccinated people like me are a threat to the vaccinated. You cannot make up your mind because you are that daft. You're on one, argue, one side you're saying, get the vaccine so you can be protected from the virus. But those who are not vaccinated are a threat to you. Can you people be this stupid on a normal basis? Is this, is this the typical nature of you people? How can you lead a country if you're this stupid? It's as if you don't have, you don't have a modicum of shame. It's as if you have no concern about how foolish your, your, your statements are. I have not been vaccinated. You are saying to me that as a parent, my child should be vaccinated so that my child can enter the school. Okay, fine. I accept your statement. Good. Okay, yes, Madam Minister, yes. Let the child be vaccinated. Then on the other hand, your advisor to the Minister of Health, Leslie Ramsamy, is now saying that I am a threat to a vaccinated child. Are you that foolish? Is this not enough to make you people pause for a second and say, hold on a minute. We are looking very, very stupid to the public here. Let's stop. That's what Biden said. That the unvaccinated people are killing the vaccinated people. And you all are happy to repeat that kind of garbage. My issue with you is that my, my, my area of study and specialty are the sciences. I told you I have, I have never been trained to be a preacher. My university qualification is in the sciences, more so environmental science. I have studied biology and others, other areas at a university level. And I did not scrape through university either. This is, this is, this is, this to me is becoming most unnerving that politicians in this country and their followers could be this stupid. If the vaccinated people, Leslie Ramsamy, are a threat or are threatened by unvaccinated people, that means unvaccinated people are stronger than vaccinated people. This is, this is overbearing. And so Leslie Ramsamy, before Priya Manikchan's uh, press conference, is, according to Guyana Chronicle, is cited as saying that they, ha they would have to be, probably in his view, because of what France is doing, Vaccine passes given to Guyanese people, to Guyanese people, people in this country. And you'll not be allowed to go to restaurants or to go to the, the mall or into banks or places of work if you don't have a vaccine, a card to say that you have a vaccine or a result to say, a recent result, that you are PCR tested. Leslie Ramsamy, remember what I told you they did to the soldiers. They already told the soldiers, if you're not taking a vaccine, you have to pay, you have to pay. You have $25,000 from your pocket to get a PCR test. It worked for the military. So Ram Sami Contra Chronicle is now going to use this for the whole population because the soldiers accepted your garbage. And I'm disappointed in you soldiers. 
So the soldiers accepted it. Now they're saying that for the general population, the suggestion is that you take the vaccine or you have your card. And when you have this card and you want to go into the restaurant, you have to show the owner of the restaurant or the mall or the, or the store or the food store, whatever it is, that you have a vaccine. This is the nature of the anti-Messiah. It is not the, uh, the, the Antichrist here. Because the Antichrist would not be Muslim or Hindu. But is the, the essence of the person, the nature of the spirit of the anti-Messiah is found in this country right now. And it's a spirit of terrorism. Where you are intimidated into action. And hello. There is some Guyanese. Sitting somewhere. Right now maybe on this broadcast. Who has no issue. With proudly like our regional chairman. Showing you that he has both shots. That's your right. You could take the, the third one because you, like you forgot that on, on, the, on the vessel now in the oil industry people are being infected although they had both shots both so they're now saying that a third a third shot may be required then you got the fourth one or a fifth one and you daft clowns won't get it but let me make this clear to you mr ramsami I'm calling on every Guyanese on this broadcast now, and I will do more work later to shut this country down for two weeks. Here's how you'll do it if they try this strategy. Stock up on your supplies now. And anytime they tell you that you have to give some store owner or the mall some pass in your hand to say that you have got a vaccine or you have to pay 25,000 this government give you $91 US that's your $19,000 by the way for each child but you must pay $25,000 from your pocket for a PCR test just to go into a food store use the money and stock up your house and for two weeks do not go into any store don't shop See what happens to these businessmen. Because the private sector commission is an extension of this government in their behavior. I saw the election. So they're saying in the private sector commission that they are supporting the government's approach that the unvaccinated is a threat to the vaccinated. And as a result, they must be protected from us who are not vaccinated. How would they be protect protected? by having us the unvaccinated people have our our test to show them hey listen i'm not a threat to you listen to me you you guyanese people and listen to me well you could choose to listen to it or not if you allow this pacific government to force you like this i promise you that it will get worse because they'll realize that you are just a, a, a number or a group of daft wimps who they could do anything to all it takes, all it takes is for a few thousand of us to have a very firm stance in this country. And this government shall not risk it. Because the government knows that the same private sector commission cannot handle their business not having any customers for any extended period of time and any store owner who wants to force you to do this boycott them boycott them they are disrespectful You should never be allow, uh, allowing any government to terrorize you to this extent. What does terrorism mean? It speaks to using criminal means, either force or intimidation, to achieve a political agenda against civilians. 
we are civilians. This government is doing it to us. I heard on the radio the other morning an announcer saying that the, those of us, he's speaking of himself here, those, of, of those people who have been vaccinated deserve the right to be protected from the unvaccinated. And, and, and he, he was speaking, of course, as if he's so important and intelligent. And I'm saying to myself, I that stood there, does this man understand how stupid he's making himself sound on a radio station here? The purpose, Madam Minister of Education and Health, Mr. Minister of Health, and a common advisor who's being paid, how much, whatever money you're being paid, to advise this government in the area of health, Mr. Leslie Ramsamy, the purpose of a vaccine, the purpose, the scientific purpose of a vaccine is to prevent an individual from contracting a disease. That is the purpose where a weakened strain or form of that virus or bacterium is injected into an individual so that there can be an immune response. The immune response will cause your immune system to generate antibodies and these antibodies are able in the future to, to identify the pathogen in a stronger form and destroy it. That is basic science, you dummies. It is unthinkable that you people are called medical doctors and you don't, you don't understand, apparently, the most elementary nature of a vaccine. Do not call it a vaccine if those who have it are threatened by those who don't. It is not a vaccine. It's something else. It is not a vaccine. It cannot be a vaccine. Because by definition, a vaccine is a preventative mechanism. How can you be a medical doctor and be this stupid? The World Health Organization should capture all of you, put you in a lab, and see whether COVID has gotten into you, this vaccine, to make you this stupid. Because there's no way that you people could have studied in any entity of, of merit and you could speak so stupidly. You seem to forget that the same US and France and these people who are leading you all are telling you that a man could be a woman. You seem to forget that at the Olympics they have a man, a masculine man, male, saying he's a female and he could compete with women. But a woman who has a high testosterone level, she, she has a vagina, she has breasts, all natural. The only issue is that her testosterone is a little high. She cannot participate because it's unfair. These are the people who are guiding you all in terms of vaccination. So it doesn't surprise me. If you could say that a man is a woman, then you could tell me that a vaccine is a vaccine, but it doesn't protect you from sicknesses. I can understand why you're so stupid. There is a global agenda among certain territories and because Guyana is so weak, Guyana will submit to anything just to get grants. You have oil money sitting in, in, in the New York, uh, uh, the, the bank, the federal bank, but you still need grants because you can't touch your money. So you do anything to your people to get money. For those of you who are sitting at the back of the class, I need to remind you that the purpose of a vaccine, by definition, is to prevent an individual from contracting a disease. You don't have to be protected from unvaccinated people. That is the purpose of a vaccine, by definition. There is an agenda afoot. And the agenda here, number one, has to be proof that in this age, you are able to control a population by just about any means necessary. There has to be an agenda. 
there has to be an agenda because it is impossible for me to see people who are responsible leaders echoing such dribble. So on the heels of what Ram Sami said, because Ram Sami said as well, go to see Mama Jim, Ram Sami said that those who were responsible enough to be vaccinated should be protected and those of us who are not vaccinated, we should have to pay from our pockets because we are irresponsible. So it is now being peddled in Guyana by the PP civic government through Lazi Ramsami that if you choose to exercise a basic human right given to you by the UN, you are irresponsible. Do you see what's happening here? That the picture being painted to you now is that the exercising of your basic human right is an act of irresponsibility. Do you understand what this government is saying to you? And how easily they are stripping away your right to yourself. According to the European Human Rights, I think it's the, 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 the court, they have got a very unique argument because persons are actually going to court in the UK about their right to be unvaccinated. I know this government is going to cite those cases without informing you about what the entire judgment is, but I will not be so responsible. Intricately involved, because the court said that it is the responsibility of any government to take care of the citizenry. It's, it's, it's reasonable enough to say that. And if, if a government sees that a disease is going to cripple, debilitate, and destroy the people, the government has a right. According to the European Union, the government has the right to ensure the people are vaccinated. Because you can't allow the population to just die off. Reasonably enough. Here is the catch. The court said though, that you have to be cautious as to not cross the line of forcing people with, due to undue behavior like this government right here. What, like what the two soldiers and what they want to do to us as parents, that they're not opening school until we and our children are vaccinated. Or until teachers and parents are vaccinated. First it was teachers. Remember they said that? Then it became teachers and parents. There is no teachers, parents, and children. And you all don't see what's coming down the, the pipeline here. But the, the, the European Human Rights Court says something that, that is major here. Apart from for, not forcing you, they say something that's significant. That in this whole act of seeking to vaccinate citizens just to ensure that they're safe, somebody has to bear responsibility if something goes wrong to me. That's what this government doesn't want to talk about. Because this set of criminals are telling you, Everybody who dies from it, oh, it was a co it's comorbidity. You had some other disease, and that's what killed you. It wasn't COVID that killed you. It is something else. Every person who took the vaccine and died, it was comorbidity. Something has happened to you and you died. It wasn't the vaccine that caused it. But the European Human Rights Group and the court were specific. That somebody has to be held accountable. If you force me to be injected and I wind up being sick, then the government is 100% responsible for what happened to me. Is the PPP Civic willing to do that? Absolutely not. They will never do it. They are not going to, they would rather die than do that. Further, the court said, which is what I've been telling you all along anyway, that you cannot force people to be vaccinated if there is not proper research done to make, to declare the vaccine safe. You can't have this hopscotch business that you're behaving with in Guyana and in, at, the, at the World Health Organization level and in the US. You said that a vaccine is uh, has a high efficacy rate. 
it is effective. What I told you before, that these people didn't tell y'all, is that as the variant of the viruses present themselves, for example, you have the Delta variant, you have the one from Brazil, you have the one from, 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 from Europe, the one from China. As these viruses mutate, I told you, the vaccine that they had then becomes less effective because the virus has changed itself to look like something else and to behave like something else. So the effectiveness or what's called the efficacy of one vaccine one year ago is, diff is far less now. Because this is called a novel, meaning new virus. It has not yet mutated or transformed itself so many times that they have a handle on it. Where at the end it becomes weaker in its nature. If you notice, the Delta strain became more dangerous and more deadly. Which means the virus has changed itself to be worse than the first form. These moronic bats cannot understand that. All in their mind is, go to school, open the country, or follow the U.S. and France. Vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. These people are going to force you to force your child to become a guinea pig, a lab rat. They have done no human testing on these vaccines. No lab testing, I should say. No animal test. No pre-testing on animals to, de to determine what are the effects. And as a result of that, they have to find some agent, some person, some individual, some organism in which you will inject this mRNA vaccine, then they have to get results from you. Have I not told you this? That's why they will call you to ask you, how do you feel? What are you going through? When they follow up, it's not because of care, it's because they need information to work with. They don't have rats, they don't have mice, they don't have monkeys, they don't have rabbits. They have you. Hence, when they inject your child now, they'll call to see at the school they have a healthcare worker. How do you feel today? Do you have a fever? Uh, is there a rash in your skin? And what you do not understand, many of you, and I understand what you don't understand either. That's fine. That's why I'm here. The inventor of the mRNA vaccine, note what I said to you, the inventor of it, not one who uses technology, the man who made it, the man who discovered the mRNA, which is messenger ribonucleic acid, the person who was behind this, who has a view that in your cell there's a, there's a system that messages can be sent internally. Your cell is a whole organism in itself how it behaves. So he said it's possible that you can vaccinate people with the same technology where messengers, messengers are sent through your vaccine to a certain part of the cell so it can make the spike protein and you're safe. That man said, and I watched him when he said it, that it was never tested extensively enough to be injected into people because he said he informed the US, Fauci and those people, that this is, this is trouble. The one who invented it told Fauci we have a problem here. This thing is not behaving as the way, as the, in a manner that I thought it would have behaved. That's what he said. Because instead of the messenger ribonucleic acid, mRNA, remaining on site of the vaccine, and then your, 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 your antibodies begin to act, it is traveling and it is being accumulated in different parts of your body, including your brain. That's what he said. The danger is this. He also said, and I told you this, that what these governments have to do therefore is to tell you that if you take a vaccine, for example, and you develop a heart condition, that's not because of the vaccine, it's a comorbidity case. You had an underlying issue. Make sense? So they will never blame it on the vaccine because they have no record that the vaccine affects you in this way. 
So they'll tell you, hey, listen, it's an underlying issue you have. It's a case of comorbidity. You had some other thing that was going to kill you anyway. I hope that this is helping somebody to open your eyes a little wider. And that's what they're going to put in your child's, your child's body. I'm telling you that they're safe. When the inventor said it's dangerous. When they are discovering based on what I have read or what I've seen. That persons are presenting certain ailments that are appearing to have no association to the vaccine but they're saying to these doctors i've never had this before i'm paralyzed and, not, and, and it doesn't seem as if I, I, I have had any any hint of any musculoskeletal issue or any neuromuscular issue but doctors saying no no it can't be the vaccine that was an underlying issue that you had Do you see what's happening here? This government is not focused on your health. This government is focused on their being considered by the World Health Organization and the US. Their focus is on being considered one of the good boys or the good children. You did well. You have a very high vaccination rate, so hence you're safe. So Christiana is asking, I didn't see that. If the country was not vaccinated, people, I wonder what, let me see what he said. I wonder what Cristiano Ramio Singh. If the country was not vaccinated, people, I wonder what your opinion would be that they're smart, that they're intelligent, that at least we haven't bowed to the, to the daftness of the US, that at least we are better off in terms of our intellectual abilities. At least we understand that vaccines prevent diseases, and if a vaccine doesn't present, prevent a disease, it is not a vaccine. That's what it was said. Now, how do you feel? Are you better informed? Because all night I've been saying to you what I, what I am saying, and it seems as if you've just come on the broadcast, so I don't have an issue informing you. That anything that is called a vaccine that does not prevent a sickness is not a vaccine. This government is going to continue to employ terrorist actions or behaviors or strategies under the guise of caring for you. They cannot force you blatantly, initially, or they couldn't. But now, but now, they are going to force you because the soldiers were the first line of defense that we had and they crumbled. And if your soldiers crumbled, then your civilians are nothing in these people's eyes. But I'm one civilian who understand that the right to my body is my human right. You cannot force me to be medicated. You cannot force me to be inoculated. And I will close by speaking to Madam Priya Manikchan, who in her press conference had the gall, had the nerve to say to me as a parent through the press that the vaccines are here and all people need to do, all the people need to do is to take the vaccine because the vaccine, according to Priya Manik Chan, according to the Minister of Education, the vaccine stops the spread of the virus. I almost gagged. 
I could not believe that a minister of education with the chief education officer sitting beside her and the permanent secretary sitting beside her, both wearing a mask, and I'm happy they did it because they're not sensible to say anyhow, but both these men sitting beside a minister of education would have heard in an information age that Priya Manik Chan, as a minister of education, say to me and the country, the world at large, that the vaccine prevents the spread of COVID. If you have uttered that, Madam Priya Manik Chan, then why would Leslie Ramsamy say that I'm a threat to you if you're vaccinated? How much more irresponsible and foolish can your utterances be, madam? I am, I, am, I am beginning to feel sorry for your position, for you in that position, because it seems as if you are the face who was chosen to make these utterances and nobody seems to be there to back you up. This is unfortunate. And you chose at that forum to have your personal attacks against Coretta McDonald because she's a part of APNU FC and it was for you, the, the GTU came out light and I'm, I, I was surprised to see him. I thought he was non-existent. But suddenly he found cause to be in the street. After all he did to teachers for a year, he found cause to be in the street now. And your, your reasoning is that Coretta McDonald, a member of parliament for APNU AFC, and I could not care less about any one of y'all. So I'm not speaking to defend Coretta McDonald here. I do not care about APNU AFC. They are the worst thing that ever happened again, if you ask me. Because they have us exactly where we are right now. We're their leader, not them. But Priya Manik Chan chose, and I know you watch me, I speak to you directly. You chose, Madam Minister, to have this personal issue against Coretta McDonald. And in your personal issue with Coretta McDonald, you arrived at this statement that you are now in a position as Minister of Education to say that schools can be reopened since the vaccines are here. And if the vaccines are here, then you are able to stop the spread through vaccination of COVID-19. When across the world they're telling you that even in the US, that vaccinated people are becoming infected, hence the vaccinated people must be protected from the unvaccinated ones. And you have the nerve in an information age as a minister of education to make such a foolish utterance. How could you? How could you? as a minister of education, be so irresponsible and so uninformed. You forgot what Ram Sami said? Your party boy, Ram Sami said, that vaccines are good. They're so good apparently that if somebody is unvaccinated, they're a threat to those of you who are vaccinated. And you would say, that vaccines stop the spread of COVID-19. If vaccines stop the spread of COVID-19, Madam Minister of Education, then an unvaccinated person is not a threat to a vaccinated one. That is called basic common sense. And I repeat it to your aid. If Madam Priya Manichan, Madam Minister of Education, if vaccinations according to you prevent the spread of COVID, then Madam, an unvaccinated person is not a threat to a vaccinated person. That is called basic common sense. You saying one thing and Ramsami saying something totally different. How can you be so stupid in your utterances? That is irresponsible coming from your mouth. As a minister of education, that is what you would say? And you claim to be advised by the Ministry of Health? So why then do unvaccinated people pose a threat to vaccinated ones if the vaccine stops the spread of COVID? Answer that please, Priya Manichan. 
I am honestly, I am telling you with all of my heart, honestly, I am beginning to feel sorry for you because I know I have dealt with you before, indirectly and directly. And this is not the quality of person I know you to be. Something is wrong with you. And I'm concerned. You went on further to say. That. Our children. Would likely be vaccinated from age 12 to 17 because you're awaiting this batch or for the vaccines to be doled out for our children i'm telling you madam madam minister of health of education according to the court of europe that decision rests entirely on medical experts who have done thorough research into the effectiveness and the effects of a vaccine on an individual. And I must repeat to you, Madam Minister, that that has not been done in the case of COVID-19. But I took note of your attitude, and I'll address that. Because you are a sitting Minister of Education, and you chose to speak to me because you addressed the public, which includes me. You chose to speak in my presence to Coretta McDonald, who's the General Secretary of the Guy Teachers Union. And you sat in the seat of a Minister of Education. And you were saying at that forum that Coretta McDonald is acting as an agent of APNU FC. Probably she, probably she is. But you are a Minister of Education. And you sit in the seat not as a PPP Minister of Education. You sit in the seat of a Minister of Education with responsibility for education for implementing policies and generating the same. You in that seat sat there and told Coretta McDonald in my hearing that she's apparently upset. And I'm not quoting you here. So I'm not speaking for Bidim here. You in essence said to her that she has a problem with her being in office and, has a, and, and she must understand that she her hopes of, of the of apnea returning to power would be minimal because you're not getting out of there anytime soon that's what you in essence said to this woman so i sat and heard you as a minister of education speaking as though you are on a political campaign while you are in your first year of being a minister that is what speaks to your terroristic behavior i'm talking i'm talking across the board here not you directly i'm speaking in general that kind of attitude towards the people make us see that you are seeking to be intimidating in your, in your conduct. Because you are not sitting there speaking to me as a minister of education. You've gone into PPP civic party mode. <clears throat> and in that frame of mind, You have a CEO and a permanent secretary sitting beside you while you are seeking to have a political campaign launched as a sitting Minister of Education. I am offended. You should never, as a Minister of Education, sit in the Ministry of Education's building to say that you or your party would not be removed anytime soon. In essence, you win the next election. You have you, you people are going too far with this foolishness. And I don't know who's your protocol officer in the Ministry of Education, but they need to pull you in somewhere, maybe if for Ali, one of them, and counsel you. Of course, he may not do it. But somebody, maybe Gilta Shira, or one of them, probably may be able to help you to understand protocol as a minister. You do not sit in the office of a minister and tell somebody from the opposition that you're not coming out of office anytime soon. So how are you campaigning in, in Ministry of Education building? When did any political campaign start? But you people are demonstrating this degree of arrogance and, and, and this brash attitude as if nobody could touch you. You have become untouchable 
and uncaring. Is it still fine? I have a very serious issue with that. I have an I have a very serious issue with that. If I sit to listen to you speak to me through the press in the Ministry of Education's building, I expect you to speak to me as a Minister of Education, not PPP Civic Minister. I do not expect you, Ms. Madam, Ma Madam Manikchan, to speak to me as if you're a political campaign. Do so in your Freedom House environment, please, but do not come before me as a parent. Speaking to me about my child's well-being, and you talking to Coretta McDonald about who would not win an election, all kinds of foolishness. I am offended. Because it seems as if few people don't know where to draw the line anymore in this country. Your actions and your words are irresponsible and unacceptable. If you have a spat with Coretta McDonald because you said that Jack, you hurt your feelings, then you're, you're trashed out in Parliament. Because when you head to Parliament, you go to Parliament as a member of Parliament. So you could take off your minister hat and you could deal with them. But do not sit in the Ministry of Education building and tell some other person that you are not leaving the office anytime soon because you have to be mad for a long time. Your, your insinuations that you intend to win the next election while you're a Minister of Education serving, that is irresponsibleness and it's actually an insult to the Ministry of Education. If you are uninformed, madam, there's a reason why they say that after elections and people are sworn that the campaign is over. When people go to the poll, they tell you that the campaigning is finished. After that, it's about serving. It's not about campaigning anymore, but you seem to be campaigning in year one. And it seems as if there is not the will, probably not, of the masses to have you people in check. Hence, probably you're of the view that you could say whatever you want, wherever you want, in whatever capacity you want, and nobody could say anything to you. I beg to differ. Based on your utterance, Madam Premier Manik Chan, I have every right to believe that whatever you choose to do from now, you're doing it on the heels of being a PPP member who is still campaigning while he's sitting in some public office. It is not that you're doing it as a minister because your utterances have given me cause to believe that your, that your statements from here on in have more to do with, with, with campaigning than with serving. And that is worrying and worrisome. I do not know. I am yet to comprehend what lends itself to this behavior from you all. You cited the cash grant issue. And while you speak to people taking the vaccine, because the vaccine, according to you, Premier Manning Chad, would stop the spread of COVID, you have hundreds of parents touching, rubbing shoulders, and bumping into each other to get money from you all. $19,000, $91 people are prepared to put their life on the line for. That should tell you how, how, how desperate persons are in this country. Which is why they accept many foolishness from you all. So much foolishness from you people. But the fact that Guyanese are in an oil-rich nation, oil-rich nation, they are so desperate to get $91 from you US, it's just embarrassing. And you people don't seem to understand what you present to the world. If you have parents of children, when you talk about COVID and all of that, rushing to get $91 from you, US, it gives, me the, the, it, it gives the world the view that Ghana is still a 
poor nation, you are still maybe fifth class by now. You are still unable to understand or to benefit from or demonstrate that you are benefiting from the wealth that you possess. That's why you're subject to their rulership. Why should you tell me about vaccinated and people and unvaccinated people, but when you come to share your cash grant on your house lot, hundreds of people could gather and you don't care about COVID anymore. You are hypocrites. That is the epitome of hypocrisy. And you're playing a political game somewhere along here. It is my hope. It is my ultimate desire to see my people arise from their slumber. To see you preachers get out of your, of your comfort zone wherever you find it, it to be. To see you imams and, and you leaders in the Muslim circle, you clerics. To see you pundits. To see you step forward and lead the charge in this nation. This country is in absolute crisis. The opposition is in a morgue. I am encouraging you, my Guyanese, my fellow Guyanese, do not acquiesce, do not bow, do not kowtow, do not stoop to the level that the soldiers did. You would lose every other right that you've ever possessed. Do not give in. My child would not go to any school until scientifically I'm aware that COVID-19 is no longer a threat. I do not trust Frank Anthony. I trust Leslie Ramsamy even less based on the irresponsible utterances throughout this process. I do not trust scientists who claim to be scientists but who say to me that a vaccine does not prevent a disease. I will never trust you because you're going against all of the ethics of science in the name of this one agenda. I am not accepting your nonsense. I refuse to subject myself to being de-educated. May not be a word, but you'll understand what I'm saying to you. I refuse, me, to allow myself to be de-educated to a point whereby I accept what is irrational, nonsensical, and absolutely worthy of being in a cesspool. I am not going to accept your telling me that a vaccine does not prevent a disease, but it's important for me to have it. That is the epitome of stupidity and absurdity. I refuse to be one of their subjects to be that stupid. I owe you no political affiliation. I owe you no political consideration. I owe you nothing but what you deserve. I shall not accept your nonsense and your dribble. Did you not say to me, did Fauci not tell the world that if you wear a mask, you have a mask to do there, let me know. Because some of your memory is a bit shallow. So I'll close, with, I'll close with this demonstration to you. Did Fauci not tell you Remember when COVID just started? Then Fauci, Anthony Fauci, the criminal from the USA, from the NIH, did he not tell you that if you wear this, didn't Fauci tell you that? That if you wear this N95 mask and you stay six feet away from people, you sanitize and you maintain social distancing, 
that you will not contract COVID-19, highly unlikely, almost 0.1%? Are you still in the broadcast? Answer me. When there was no vaccine, and even when the vaccine just arrived, did Fauci not tell you all that if you wear this mask or a K95 mask, you sanitize, you stay away from people, did Fauci not say to you that you will not contract COVID-19? Just answer me. Did Leslie Ramsami not tell you all through, the, you saw all the billboards and so on. Did you not see the billboards around Guyana? That $100,000 was spent for millions of dollars was spent with these, 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 these graphic designers in this country. They got millions of dollars in contract to put up these big signboards. COVID kills. Wear your mask. Did you see that? Did you see, did you see this? You saw some photos showing, showing you this? Wear your mask. Sanitize. Maintain social distance. They didn't tell you that? And they said that once you do that, you are not likely to contract COVID-19. Further, further, did Fauci not tell you afterwards that you don't have to stay six feet anymore? Three feet is safe. It's not as dangerous. Didn't he tell you that? And once you're in a mask, you're safe? Okay, I'm getting responses. Fine. Did the Minister of Health in Guyana, did the Minister of Education, Priya Manichana, tell you when, you when your children went to write CSEC, did she not tell you that when the teachers are teaching them in these, the grade 10, which is from, five, from 4 to form 6, grade 10, 11, 12 students, did Priya Manichana tell you all that your child have to Wear this mask right here. Your child has to wear a mask. Your child has to sanitize. Whenever a child is in contact with the teacher, the child must be in the classroom with a mask on. Didn't tell you that? Did it tell you all that? Okay. So if you brought my children, Manap Manapri Manichan, to school, the nation's children to school, thousands of them, if you brought them out, telling them that they wear this mask right here, and they could attend classes for all these months in preparation for Caribbean Secondary Examination Council's exam. How do you now tell me that this vaccine is so important that even this is insignificant? And I mustn't call you a criminal? And I must not see you as being deceptive and wicked people? I should not deem you to be hypocritical and deceptive at the same time? So you threaten the life of my children all along, saying that this is going to protect them? And if it's sanitized, it'll be protected. Maintain social distancing. You put the chairs six feet apart in the classroom, but you said that it's safe. But now none of this is safe anymore. The only thing that's safe is a vaccine. You think I'm that stupid? Do you think I'm actually that stupid a person? Here's what you'll do for me. Tell me the mask doesn't work. I could join a campaign with y'all. You could send Edgel and all them back. You want me to campaign with you, Anthony? Let me help you out. Come out and tell the public that the mask doesn't work. Sanitizing doesn't work. Social distancing doesn't work. That the only thing that works is a vaccine. And then tell them that you're sorry because you deceived them before and you told them that mask is going to work. Try that. Because you lying devils are telling people that the vaccine is so important, but yet you tell a vaccinated person to wear a mask. Why? If the vaccines prevent a disease, Madam Premier Manichan, why are you telling a vaccinated person to wear a mask? That makes sense to you? If a vaccine prevents a disease, why are you telling a vaccinated person to wear a mask? It seems as if the mask is more effective than a vaccine. Because you'll always direct them to what's most effective. Inadvertently you do it. So why is Fauci and them telling you all that you should wear a mask after being vaccinated? Is it not because the mask is more effective than the vaccine? Or you all don't know what you want to say? I am disappointed, but I'm not surprised. I'm very angry with you people because you're playing games with people's lives. And as I tell you, as my heart will always say to me, as long as you touch the children of this country, I will have a problem with you. 
I will give whatever it takes of my life and my service to Guyana for the sake of his children. Not you. If I have to become your political foe for these children's sake, I will do it. But you will not have me sit quietly and watch you do what you intend to do to these children. And I accept it. Guyanese, your right to your body would have not been stripped away from you because of COVID-19. COVID-19 does not have a 2% death mortality rate. It doesn't have a 5% death rate, which is called mortality. It doesn't have a 1.5% mortality rate. Stop allowing these people to make it seem as if the vaccine is going to save your life. I appreciate the time I spent with you. I'm grateful for your responses. I'm thankful that I'm yet to see the usual PPP civic cronies on the broadcast. Maybe some of you all are getting scared now and you're becoming concerned, which is a good thing. Join me in being honest. Join me in being courageous. And maybe you'll have a different environment in which you can find yourself in Guyana. I'm thankful for your time. And to you saints, I bid you all shalom. I look forward to speaking with you again soon and I do look forward for a response though it may be subliminal from either Frank Anthony as he normally does or pre manic Chan. They will not say my name, which is fine, but they'll say something about the broadcast. And I don't, I don't have an issue with that. But I do look forward to is a sensible response. But I'm so saddened to say to you, I don't expect one to be forthcoming. Thank you again. Thank you again for your time and for spending this moment with me. I hope that you're further informed or you're better informed and that your courage is a bit more intensified. Somebody said they're watching from, Guyana, from Jamaica. Thank you for viewing. In short, apparently it will be much sooner than I think. We'll be on the streets. Because I'm not having this from these people all anymore. I've had enough of y'all. We maintain our social distancing and we go to the streets. And we're going to have a peaceful protest against this terrorist behavior. Shalom and do well.